The magnificent Samye Monastery in Tibet was founded in the 8th century and is said to mark the true birth of Tibetan Buddhism. But there is another Samye in a lush, secluded valley of southern Scotland that one could argue marked the coming of Tibetan Buddhism to the west. Named after the original Samye Monastery in Tibet, Samye Ling was the first Tibetan monastery to be founded in the west and remains one of the largest. Flanked by prayer flags, visitors to Samye Ling are welcomed by an imposing white stupa representing the mind, body and speech of the Buddha. So, hello. My name is Annie Lamo and I'm a Tibetan Buddhist nun, although my nationality is Scottish. And I've lived here in Sami Ling since 1989, rather a long time. And over that time, um, Sami Ling has evolved quite considerably, but already at that time, it had been around for quite a while. So actually, Sami Ling was established in 1967 by two refugee lamas who had left Tibet in 1959 due to political changes in the country. And um, they'd come to India and then gradually they'd come to the UK to study English in Oxford. Of course, you can imagine you know, what people must have thought when they saw these two Tibetan lamas in Oxford University. So anyway, gradually a lot of interest was shown. And when they came to the end of their sponsorship for the English studies, they um, agreed or they decided to stay in the UK and they looked for somewhere to set up a little centre. So by various coincidences and situations and whatnot, they eventually settled on Sami Ling, which is in the Scottish borders. And it's quite, quite nice really because a lot of the Tibetans who come here say, oh, the countryside around here is really like my homeland. So it seems like the the countryside in the part of Tibet that they came from to some extent resembled what we have here in Estil Muir and apparently even the cool <laughs> weather that we experience here is something quite pleasant for them. They established Sami Ling 1967 and it started off very small with just this one little um, lodge. It was a, apparently a hunting lodge in the past and as more interest was shown and more people came over the years, gradually evolved and it's developed considerably. There's been a lot of building, a lot of people have come over the years and now it's well over 50 years old and feels like very established. And we have a complete monastery with um, a lot of traditional kind of, um, buildings and designs and artwork, which many people find fascinating, whoever they are and whatever they are and others come because it resonates with them spiritually and they want to know more. So we're standing in one of the rooms in the original house which existed prior to Sami Ling's existence and it was used as a shrine room for about 20 years after Sami Ling began and during that time we started this um, crazy project to build a monastery, a Tibetan monastery in Dumfrieshire and so after about 20 years, the first part of that was completed. And that is the temple that we still have here today. And so when the temple was completed, then there was no longer the need for this as a main shrine room. So this room became our founder's office and our abbot's office. And it, it remained like that for quite some years. But then as the monastery building developed, then the abbot and the founder could move into new accommodation which was um, well which was permanent rather than a kind of long-term temporary solution so they moved into that and then this room became available and because in the 20 years that this room was used as a main shrine and so many things happened here it was just like the the birth of Sami Ling took place in this room spiritually speaking so then gradually they um, decided to make it into another shrine and so it's become this what we call the Chenrezi shrine which means it's dedicated to the embodiment of loving kindness and compassion.
This is the Aqua Memorial Garden and it was designed by Aqua Invity, our founder. Unfortunately, he passed away before we were able to complete it. So we've made it according to his design with one or two added little extras. <laughs> but um, it's quite a transformation from how it was before. Now I'm delighted to say that Lama Yeshe is visiting the monastery briefly today and he's agreed to give me a few words. Lama Yeshe, the modern world is becoming a very challenging place to be. Why is the work being done here at Samye Ling so important? Because we are uh, passing the many thousands, thousands of years of Buddha's wisdom. Means here we are trying to teach loving kindness, compassion, tolerance, forgiveness, and helping others. So Buddha's teaching says there is no liberation unless you think of others first before yourself. So that's the message we send. We're now in the Samiling Temple, which is like the heart of Samiling. And it was built over a period of about 10 years, between the 70s and 80s. And we had a grand opening in 1988. And it was built entirely to um, traditional design. And most of the decoration also very, very traditional. However, many of the materials and the methods were a little bit different because of what was available and because of the conditions here. The entire structure was uh, put together by volunteers and all the decoration was created by volunteers. So we had a master artist who uh, designed all the paintings, the tankas, and also oversaw all of the decoration and even the shape of the temple itself. So he was well versed in all the kind of the, um, the traditional shapes and significances and how things are put together, how the colours are. So he trained a lot of people as painters and we had some sculptors and then other people who could do um, the screen printing that was used to make the, the ceiling panels, the um, people who could sew the surroundings of the tankas, people who could paint the gold or, or the gold coloured paint in some cases people who could make all of the different statues. So there was a whole host of different kind of skilled people or, or, or people who managed to learn skills to contribute to the temple. Living in Samiling, the number of people, usually about 40. I'm not quite sure of the exact number at the moment, but of those there are monks and nuns and also lay people. And so we all live together and we all um, do our prayers and our um, studies. And also we do some service to contribute to the functioning of the community. So um, that means you know, we all have sometimes a variety of different roles some people are cooking, some have to clean, and sometimes we do a bit of both. And then we have a little shop and a cafe, and we have a, um, a flower garden, which we try to keep as beautiful as possible, weather and rabbits permitting. And we have a vegetable garden. And um, during the lockdown for COVID, we did quite a bit in the vegetable garden. And since then, we've managed to provide ourselves with enough green vegetables to last more or less all year round. So we're quite pleased about that, to be able to offer our guests the, um, organic green vegetables fresh from the garden, you know, from, from the soil to the plate <laughs> in just a few hours. So that, um, th that's quite good in SDL Muir, <laughs> where conditions aren't considered to be the very best.
Samyaling Monastery, a slice of Tibet in Scotland. A truly magical place.